researcher at IMPRI, IMPACT and Policy Research Institute, Prabhav, Ebong Niti Onushandhan Shanstha, New Delhi, extend my warmest welcome to you all to IMPRI's web policy talk. We are gathered today for a panel discussion on the rise of Bangladesh and its impact on India's Northeast. This discussion is being organized by IMPRI's Center for International Relations and Strategic Studies, CIRSS. As a part of IMPRI flagship discussion series, the State of International Affairs, the hashtag Diplomacy Dialogue. I welcome all of you to this very special deliberation and thank you for tuning in. Now let me introduce the very esteemed panel for today's session. The chair for this session is Ambassador Riva Ganguly Dash. Ma'am has served as a former Secretary East at the Ministry of External Affairs and has also served as India's High Commissioner to Bangladesh and Council General of India at New York. Ma'am was also India's Ambassador to Romania, Albania and Moldova. We are honored to have you amongst us, ma'am, and extend a very warm welcome. Thank you. Our distinguished panelists for the session are Professor Mustafizur Rahman, Sir is Distinguished Fellow at the Center for Policy Dialogue, Dhaka, Bangladesh. Apna ke shagato janai, sir. We are glad to have our second distinguished panelist for the session, Dr. Prabir De, Professor at the Research and Information System for Developing Countries, RIS, New Delhi. A very warm welcome, sir. We look forward to learning from our very esteemed panel. And without any further ado, let us start the program. It is my privilege to invite the chair of the session, Ambassador Riva Ganguly Dash, to start the program with the chair's opening remarks and further to invite the panelists. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. And, uh... It's a great honor to chair uh, this very interesting session and a very topical and uh, on a very topical subject. Uh, clearly, uh, you know, rise of Bangladesh is something on which I'm very curious to know more from uh, Dr. Mustafizur Rahman, but uh, a lot of data speaks for itself. And, uh, you know, in a very short one sentence, I can say that uh, Bangladesh has been an absolutely amazing growth story. Um, its, uh, its economic growth and its success is, uh, you know, one of resilience and triumph. Uh, Bangladesh has been steadily attracting foreign investments and has achieved consistent GDP uh, growth. Uh, the focus largely has been in export-oriented in, uh, industries, uh, development of a robust, uh, we have seen development of a robust uh, manufacturing sector in Bangladesh. Uh, and Bangladesh has not only developed very well economically, but it has performed exceedingly well in the social sector. Uh, the country managed to achieve most of its uh, Millennium Development Goals, MGDs, on time. The country has fulfilled the criteria to, uh, you know, move on from uh, least developing countries, uh, least de uh, LDC status to um, uh, developing country status. And uh, this is all, uh, you know, uh, uh, an example of the unprecedented economic growth and uh, that we have seen. Uh, and in fact, Bangladesh's uh, record in uh, poverty reduction has been uh, declared an inspiring model by the World Bank. Uh, the key, some of the key uh, aspects that we see of the economic development are uh, increased consumer spending, emerging young uh, and uh, workforce, high economic resilience, uh, uh, digital transformation, which is taking place at a very fast pace, increased government spending, rapid private sector economic, uh, private sector investment, during the COVID period, when uh, you know most countries were in negative, Bangladesh still managed to grow at 3.4%. Uh, and um, the other interesting thing that I found was that agriculture, which was contributing most of the uh, was contributing to uh, you know the to the GDP, uh, 
uh, has a, which was about half during uh, independence is now uh, only about 12%, whereas manufacturing, the contribution of manufacturing and industry has increased from 8% to 35%. So clearly these are very good signs. Um, the share of women in workforce is 35%, a very impressive uh, indicator uh, and uh, this is the this is behind the extreme, very good success of the garment sector and as per uh, uh, you know uh, i really uh, look forward to hearing more on this from mustafizur rahman now coming to the northeast we all know that um, when a partition uh, occurred uh, the northeast of india lost its uh, you know, it was the whole area which is now Bangladesh and Northeast, the undivided India was an integrated economic uh, entity. And the uh, with partition, uh, the Northeast lost uh, not only its modern uh, connectivities, which is uh, you know the road railway which the which the British had built, but also the centuries old trade routes through inland waterway, the seaport, they lost all connectivity to a convenient and accessible seaport. Now, I think uh, why we even find it important to discuss this subject today and why it, it is meaningful is uh, because uh, the bilateral relation has seen such a huge change in the last several years that, um, uh, you know, we can, uh, and there's so much that has happened in the bilateral relations that there is a, there is this uh, whole atmosphere, the whole enabling environment where Northeast can really, uh, uh, you know, benefit from uh, the growth and development in its uh, neighboring countries. And here I feel politically two th things are extremely important. One is the, um, uh, you know, ever since Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina came to power, the action taken by Bangladesh on the insurgents, as uh, the Northeastern insurgents, that has, you know, brought about a security situation in that area, which, is, uh, which has been an enabling factor for uh, further growth of the Northeast. The land boundary agreement between India and Bangladesh, which, you know, is such a huge success, which we sometimes tend to forget, is it actual demonstration of the political will that exists between our two countries? And here again, a big irritating issue and irritant in the bilateral relations were resolved through sheer political will. So these two things demonstrate the political will and create the enabling environment, which has allowed a lot of other developments to take place, especially in the economic field, which um, which is which will enable uh, the Northeast to benefit from the bilateral relationship. Now, if we take take up connectivity uh, between water, both inland waterways as well as the uh, access to ports. It's a, uh, there have been several developments. Of course, the inland waterway connectivity exist, has existed since 1972, but new ports of call have been added, new, uh, uh, new uh, um, routes have been added and actually, uh, you know, greatly benefiting the state of Tripura. Car, uh, the uh, port, faci port facilitation, we all know that uh, now, um, uh, the trade mm -hmm. between uh, goods between uh, rest of India and Northeast can move through the um, uh, uh, Mongla and Chattogram port. Uh, the commercial uh, operations have started. It's a huge success story. Road and railway. In fact, I was looking at the uh, figures of the lines of credit that India has given to Bangladesh, and it seems almost 12% of the LOCs have been used on road and railway projects. Mm -hmm. It's almost um, almost 1 billion has been uh, you know, actually dispersed out of the 10 billion uh, uh, development assistance and uh, all of 40 projects uh, which have been uh, identified, 14 are already completed. Uh, but I think the some of the major impediments that are still there uh, to uh, really fully uh, exploit the potential that exists are uh, continuing inefficient uh, connectivity, uh, border crossings, uh, which are not particularly efficient because transshipment of goods has to take place, high tariffs, 
uh, other non-tariff barriers, uh, then um, uh, you know harmonization of customs facilities standardization of container size in fact even simple things like uh, availability of electricity internet uh, connectivity, having um, uh, actual, uh, uh, you know, a quarantine, for instance, a quarantine post available in the in in a post where uh, uh, this is required. So altogether, I think there are there is still a lot of work which needs to be done. However, I would also like to point out that um, you know the the uh, what is happening in the sub regional uh, uh, groupings uh, such as Bimstek and BBIN. This is extremely important, especially the BIN. Now I think we should call it the MVA is Motor Vehicles Agreement and the protocol is between the Bangladesh, India and Bhutan. And that I think uh, is uh, is very important. So uh, we can look forward to uh, you know an improvement of intra-regional trade, which is actually 5% right now to uh, something much higher. We all know that the ASEAN interregional trade is 25%. And this will immensely benefit. There are n number of reports on this that uh, you know, if connectivity improves, is harmonization takes place, then uh, and trade facilitation improves, then there is uh, it's a real win-win for both India and Bangladesh. So with these initial words, I would like to hand over the floor to Professor Mustafizur Rahman. We really look forward to hearing from you. We know that uh, you know Bangladesh has had a little difficult time because of the Russia-Ukraine war, and the uh, you know the foreign exchange reserves have fallen, and it has impacted the whole world in terms of fuel and food security. So look forward to hearing from you. Over to you, Professor Mustafizur Rahman. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair Ambassador uh, Riva Ganguly Das. Uh, uh, very good to see you uh, and. Uh, as I was mentioning, uh, conveying uh, uh, the best wishes uh, to you from your uh, many admirers in, in Dhaka uh, during your uh, tenure as a High Commissioner in Dhaka during 2019-20. We had a number of opportunities to meet with you and uh, discuss issues of uh, deepening and broadening uh, Indo-Bangladesh uh, relationships. So thank you very much. Uh, and thank you also for those uh, initial remarks. I think you have covered a, a number of uh, areas uh, which uh, we would like to focus. And uh, uh, I'm also very happy uh, that, uh, that uh, Dr. Jun Kumar and the IMPRI has uh, and taken this initiative uh, to allow us to discuss some of the issues which uh, have emerged as, as very important in the current context. And uh, uh, no less than Dr. Prabir uh, Day is, is here to also take us through those uh, uh, issues. And uh, I have always learned from Prabir. So uh, together, maybe that we will be able to um, add some value to, to today's discussion. Now, Chair, you have rightly mentioned about Bangladesh's uh, impressive uh, growth, uh, particularly over the past one and a uh, half decades. And it's now a $440 billion economy in purchasing power. It's in fact a $1 trillion economy in purchasing power parity dollars. And uh, the growth that we have seen in the recent past has been more or less steady and uh, without uh, volatility, uh, excepting during the uh, COVID period, as uh, you have rightly mentioned, uh, when GDP growth rate was 3.5%. Otherwise, it has been steadily, um, the average has been about 7%. So uh, that has also allowed Bangladesh to, uh, you know, to uh, experience two graduations. One is in 2015, Bangladesh graduated from World Bank's low income country category to lower middle income country category. So that's the first graduation. And in 2021, Bangladesh has been slated for graduating out of the ADC group by November 2026. So that's the second graduation. So that also speaks about the success um, uh, that we have experienced over the uh, past years. Indeed, 
if you look at the early Bangladesh uh, period, one of the very first books uh, on Bangladesh was titled uh, by uh, two foreign writers, uh, Joost Fallon and James Parkinson, Bangladesh, the test case for development. And they said that we, we wanted to write a test case for development, but since the country has been born with so much difficulty, we thought that if it can develop, any country can develop. So we titled it the test case for development. So we have come a long way as Ambassador, you have very rightly mentioned. Uh, and and the, but having said that, uh, obviously the issue at hand today is whether our two countries, and uh, obviously India has been uh, a, a, the most important friend of Bangladesh during our war of liberation, um, whether the two countries, neighboring countries, are being able to take advantage of uh, of each other's comparative advantages. So that is the uh, premise, I think, that, that we should discuss. And you have very rightly mentioned that uh, the political boundaries did not necessarily follow the economic boundaries. And, uh, and uh, so our task is to, uh, you know, to ignore those uh, you know, uh, political divisions, but how we can harness our, our advantages, to take advantage. Um, of each other's proxim proximity. We do have, you know, world's fifth largest, uh, fifth longest uh, border, land border in the world. So, so uh, and, and with regard to your point about political uh, and uh, boundaries and economic boundaries, you see, I, one example that is very important is, is that the Chatuk cement factory in Silet. So that started in the 1940s and it was called the Assam Bengal uh, cement factory. So we are still importing limestone from Meghalaya uh, through a 26 kilometer conveyor line and we are producing uh, the cement. And, uh, and also exporting uh, to, to, to Meghalaya and other Northeastern states. So I think that is a very good example of, uh, of uh, really harnessing the advantages do we, that we offer, offer to each other. And, uh, but, but, but then we have also seen uh, how, you know, because of uh, various reasons, uh, they didn't. Uh, they, this didn't deepen uh, further. Uh, even uh, when Bangladesh uh, became independent, even during post-independence period, I we we don't think that uh, we have been able to really take advantage of the potentials that that that's there. Um, we have seen a, a period where, for example, investment from Bangladesh was not allowed. Uh, in, in Northeast, uh, along with Pakistan <laughs> of all other countries. Um, so, so, but now thankfully it has, it has been opened up and uh, some of our companies are, uh, are um, uh, investing there. Um, but, uh, but if we uh, look at uh, the, over the past um, uh, one and a half decades, a number of initiatives have been put in place. You are very right. And uh, most recently, the use of uh, Chittagong and Mongla port for transit facilities um, through uh, Bangladesh to Northeastern uh, uh, states of, uh, of India. I think this is a major uh, development. We did have the coastal shipping uh, agreement, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, finalizing this, uh, fixing the uh, fees and charges um, uh, just a couple of months back. Uh, so that is, I think, a, a, a big opportunity um, uh, for both the countries. It will reduce the cost from Western India to the Northeast through uh, you know, waterways uh, bringing to Chittagong and Mongla, and then uh, through the various routes taking to the Northeast. Eight routes have been identified from Chittagong and from Mongla, 
and and it will some will go to uh, through um, Akhaura, Agatala, some will go through Tamabil, Dauki, some will go to uh, Shaula, Sutarkandi, and some will go to Bibir Bajar and Simantapur. So these routes uh, will reduce the costs significantly. One issue in Bangladesh has been the fees and charges uh, that, uh, that are to be imposed and it, it, these becomes an issue. But whenever these questions are asked to me, I say that it's not the fees and charges, but it's the business that will be you know, generated you know, to our uh, agents, to, to our handlers at, at the ship, uh, at the ports, to our transport uh, agents uh, who will carry it from Chittagong and Mongla to, to Northeastern states. So that's where really the economic benefit, uh, benefit is. Uh, but, but this is an issue. You know, what is the charge and what is the fees, et cetera, et cetera. When I was a member of uh, the transit uh, and transport committee set up by the government of Bangladesh in 2011, uh, uh, we, uh, 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 thought that uh, these will be you know, discussed uh, in the context of benefit sharing. Um, obviously, uh, when there is a, a, a transport uh, which is carried, uh, cargo which is carried from western part to the chicken neck and shiliguri, et cetera, there is time involved, there is fuel involved, there is cost involved, human uh, resources involved. And then if you go through Bangladesh, there is a lot of savings. So, so our idea was that if we can apportion the, the savings, um, that is the best way for the win-win. You also win and Bangladesh also win. Because uh, this is a very practical problem in the sense that, that, uh, that uh, oh, there are many issues uh, you know, within uh, Bangladesh and, and, and uh, you have rightly mentioned that now there is no insurgency camps, which was a big irritant for many, many years. On the other hand, we have uh, water issues uh, um, pending with, with India. So how do we create the goodwill uh, so, that, uh, so that we can use that goodwill to resolve other other issues as well so so that uh, so so it's also a lot of perception i think we, 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 which is also there uh, thankfully i remember that when in 1990 uh, we always used the word connectivity transit was a no no go word uh, and 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 uh, we uh, uh, and 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 f but but from those you know uh, whether to give uh, the discourse has now graduated to you know under which conditions to gi give and what would be the win win situation etc cetera, etc cetera. so our center center for policy dialogue professor raman soban who is our guru and i think probis guru as well um, i think uh, a seminal contribution to, 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 to this shift in the discourse from whether to how, uh, that is a, a big contribution. But on the other hand, as I was mentioning, how do we then uh, you know, uh, advance it in a way which is uh, you know, uh, acceptable in, 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 for, for all the uh, countries? You have mentioned about BBIN. Very frustratingly, you know, it was signed in 2015. The standard operating procedures were finalized in 2018, and now, you know, after eight years, uh, uh, nine years, uh, you know, what do we have to show? So, uh, so I am not saying that it is India or or Bangladesh or it is uh, why Bhutan has opted out from it. But we decided that we will go the, all the three countries: Bangladesh, India, and Nepal. We will go, and then Bhutan will join uh, suitably. But then we don't see uh, any any benefit. Many of these connectivities 
could be operationally more beneficial if the BBIN could have been implemented. You know, still, as you mentioned, Ambassador, the, the harmonization issues, the, the standardization issues, we don't have single uh, window uh, at the border and Probir has uh, worked a lot on, on, on those issues, integrated you know, customs. Um, uh, so, so interoperability of the systems. So we see that, so that because of lack of those, uh, sometimes we are not being able to take advantage uh, of it. I'm not blaming India or, 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 or you know, it's also uh, on our part, uh, some of the initiatives that we should have taken, for example, when I was uh, the, a member of the Transit uh, Transport uh, Connectivity Committee, uh, one of our major routes was the waterway from, uh, from India to Ashugans and then 35 kilometers to uh, Agartala. That we calculated to be the best uh, uh, you know, route. So you take advantage of both the waterway, the, the cost is low, and then from there only 35 kilometers. But then we found that, you know, and that was uh, agreed, uh, you know, eight, nine years back. And uh, what has been the transport through that? Indian operators uh, did take an interest in the initial period but then the infrastructure was not there, the road was not there. Uh, and and uh, uh, till now, absolutely you know, nothing. 17 cargos have, have, have made use of it. And, uh, and, and, uh, and one of the very first was the, was the equipments for the Palatana. Uh, and, and in fact, we are now getting advantage of this uh, from the Palatana power point. We are importing 100. Uh, a megawatt uh, of electricity. But my point is that uh, on our part also, uh, some of the, you know, uh, the speed with which the, the routes, the BBIN uh, finalization, the routes for, 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 for the BBIN uh, and, uh, and uh, the transformation of the uh, Ashugand River port into international river port customs facilities in Ashugand, and then the four-way lane. Only now, the four-way lane uh, to uh, um, uh, you know, Agartala is being built. It's just a 35 kilometer, and it was under the first uh, uh, line of credit. Uh, so, so you have mentioned rightly about the, you know, the three lines of credit, you know, one billion, two billion, and, and then 4.5 billion. Uh, plus the 500 million defense. So it's 8 billion. So we see that only, as you very rightly mentioned, only 14 pro projects have been, um, have been uh, completed. So, uh, so obviously it's also, the onus is also on, on, on Bangladesh. But on the other hand, I think there are some issues which you know, affect uh, also. You know, for example, India has given uh, when uh, Prime Minister uh, Hasina was uh, was in India, I think in 2019, India agreed that uh, that uh, transit will be given uh, to Nepal and, and and Bhutan by using Indian territory and using Chittagong and Mongla port for third country and second country trade. We haven't seen any uh, you know uh, tangible development also uh, in that front. So my hunch is that one thing affects another, and uh, and at the end of the day, uh, we do end up with suboptimal, uh, you know, uh, solutions. So uh, so, uh, uh, but on the other hand, the, as the title rightly mentions, you know, the rise of Bangladesh is an is an opportunity. Both I wouldn't say the opportunity for Northeast. I would say that it is an opportunity for both Northeast and and Bangladesh. Bangladesh is seeking um, markets for investment. Bangladesh is seeking markets for its export. If the Northeast develops, and I have been arguing this for the last thirty years, if Northeast develops, and in Bangladesh, you know, they say that if we give 
transit and connectivity, then we lose the captive market of the Northeast. This is a very popular argument in Bangladesh. And I say that when we didn't give transit and transport in a connectivity, how much did Northeast import from Bangladesh when it was a captive market? You can only import if you are developed, if you have the cap capacity to purchase. So if Northeast develops, then really in true sense, it becomes a captive market for Bangladesh because it will then import more from Bangladesh and Bangladesh will also use, you know, um, have opportunity to invest over there and also import from, from the Northeast. So, so that, that type of argument, which is very popular, I think that we also should demystify what is that, that if we give transit and connectivity, we lose the captive market of uh, of, of Northeast. I think it is our duty as, 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 as public, uh, uh, you know, intellectuals and, and researchers to, to demystify those you know, because we have suffered a long uh, from those arguments. So, so since Bangladesh is, uh, is, is now uh, you know, developing and um, but uh, I think our uh, this particular moment is not <laughs> very opportune. We are going through a lot of challenges. We have gone for IMF $4.7 billion loan. And uh, yes, Russia, Ukraine uh, war uh, is, is one of the reasons, uh, but uh, not the reason. Uh, anyhow, um, I would not go into that. Uh, but, uh, but the issue is that Bangladesh uh, has, uh, has an impressive track record. We are hoping that it will once again go into the high growth uh, mode very soon once the, the current challenges are over, but, but then how we can make it win-win with, with the Northeast. I think that we are setting up the, the, the connectivity and the, and the transit agreements uh, which we have signed can, uh, uh, can result in win-win situation. I think that uh, investment in, in Northeast uh, from Bangladesh uh, side, uh, could be a, a, an, an, a, an important uh, um, a factor in, in the development of, uh, of Northeast, facilitating uh, the connectivity between Western part and Eastern part could be an, an important opportunity for Bangladesh in the sense that if the investments can be made in the Northeast by India in a, in a cost-effective manner, it will generate the growth in the Northeast and, 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 and that will generate the demand and a part of which Bangladesh uh, exporters can also take advantage of. Uh, so, so this is uh, one thing that, uh, that um, I, I, I wanted to emphasize. Uh, I think that uh, the power um, uh, trade, which, is, uh, which we are now having uh, and, uh, uh, with the Northeast, that is a major uh, important development in Bangladesh. Uh, uh, I, we are looking for secured uh, power, and uh, obviously, Northeast has become is becoming a, a major source. Uh, uh, of course, the way uh, that we do the contracts and and the uh, pricing, etc., will have to be made in a way which is um, which is justified and uh, which is. Uh, beneficial to, to, to uh, both the countries. In fact, Bangladesh has also uh, uh, um, gone for digital you know, uh, trade with, with Northeast, and that is also uh, good, good for us. But I think that, uh, that uh, more uh, intensive collaboration of Bangladesh with the Northeast will help Northeast to to uh, develop at a faster pace. I, we, we see from Indian plans, huge investments are planned in, in, in the Northeast, which is being done as we sp speak. But if this can be done in a cost-effective manner, then obviously the expected returns should be there. And one of the ways of doing the cost-effective uh, uh, you know, development in Northeast is to take advantage of the connectivity uh, through Bangladesh. Uh, and that's why 
the Ashugund River port and the, and the Ashugund to Ag Agartala uh, uh, road construction, the rail constructions which are being envisaged, uh, all these uh, I think that uh, that uh, are very important to give in, you know emphasis on this because I see that uh, that and and is 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 uh, the onus is not only on Bangladesh but also some of the way that these uh, LOC project negotiations are carried out and there are a lot of snacks over there. And I just saw the other day that, um, you know, the $7.5 billion because of the delays, another $1.75 billion is negotiated with India because the costs have gone up by this time. This is not the way really, you know, to do it. So, so India also has to give more credit and Bangladesh also loses in terms of the returns that we expected in the first place. So I think that both, uh, both of us, we will have to you know, uh, look at this special relationship, you know, historical, uh, historically developed uh, uh, relationship between our two countries. Uh, and from the point of view of raising the uh, standard of living of our people, uh, and uh, um, if that be the case, then obviously I think that some of the irritants that I have mentioned, uh, looking at it from a broader perspective, more enlightened perspective becomes very important. So with those words, uh, Chair, I will stop here, uh, but I can come later on if there is any question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Joman. I think that was... Uh a very uh, useful and a very, uh, you know, you've given a very broad picture and you've raised some uh, very important issues. Uh, one is, of course, uh, you know, at all levels, we say that we see that it takes a lot of time to actually, you know, uh, reach our goals and objectives. I mean, from BBI into various LOC projects that you mentioned, and I think, that's primarily because of, um, you know, there are so many issues with each LOC project. There's sometimes land acquisition issue. There's sometimes changing specifications midway through projects. Then there is, uh, uh, you know, rules and regulations that we have where, uh, you know, tendering and there is a certain benchmark which has to be met. So I think there are uh, issues and um, uh, we are learning as we move uh, with the project, uh, with these projects. Um, you have uh, rightly mentioned about the hard and soft connectivity. I think uh, Probir has done a lot of work on this. I look forward to hearing from Professor Pravid Day on, uh, I've seen a lot of writing that he's done on the softer aspect of connectivity, which again require um, a lot of attention. And I think the what you've rightly said is that it's a win-win for both Northeast and uh, Bangladesh that both uh, develop and you know to demystify some of the narratives which are which are really become very old and uh, you know which have no uh, meaning in today's world um, so um, uh, we know I I know what you what you mean when you said that the word there was a time when the word transit could not even be mentioned because I've done a posting earlier in 1990, 2002, it was almost a taboo word, we could not even use it. But I think everybody sees the economic benefits of connectivity, which is uh, really a uh, win-win for both the countries. And uh, the stakeholders have to be involved, I think, uh, much more proactively. The business communities have to be involved and, um, uh, you know, the... Uh, whatever initiatives are in the pipeline, governments have to work to hasten these. Uh, may I now move on to request Dr. Prabir Day to give his uh, presentation. Uh, the floor is yours, Dr. Day. Thank you very much, ma'am, uh, for um, giving the floor. And also I thank uh, IMPRI uh, for uh, organizing the webinar and also including me as one of the speakers. It's a great learning experience as always to Professor Mustafizur uh, and also Ambassador uh, Riva Ganguly Das. And, and I'm enriched uh, and I have very little to add actually. I mean, uh, the overview presented by Ambassador 
uh, Reva Ganguly Das, Madam, and Professor Mustafa Zur, sir. Uh, really, I have nothing to add, uh, but I think there are a few more points uh, which I will uh, mention here, particularly the Northeast and uh, Bangladesh linkages. Uh, and um, so, but for the sake of uh, discussion, I have a, I prepared uh, a request of the IMPRI, a short uh, PowerPoint. This is a very bad habit uh, that we have, <laughs> we, you know, we have uh, gain in, uh, that uh, it is difficult uh, to come out with a very um, eloquent presentation without the PPT. So please allow me. Um, I'm sure uh, there will be uh, some questions. So, Jiwan, can I use my PPT? Yes, sir. I, I think so. You will have the option. Uh, okay, okay. Sure. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. I mean, just uh, uh, it is, and Professor Mustafa Zur, uh, Ambassador uh, Riva, they have already discussed it uh, quite extensively. Even then, uh, if somebody, some young scholar, um, they would like to note down something. So I thought to give it uh, kind of an, you know, uh, presentation just to encourage the young minds. That's it, you know. And uh, nothing there I can add when you know you you listening professor mustafa zur and ambassador riva ganguly das the quickly to me you know uh, when uh, i look at bangladesh uh, it is in one of the fastest growing economies of the region and um, bangladesh of obviously the very long you know, good track record all the time from one of the poorest economies in 1971 uh, they had already elevated to uh, the first elevation to lower middle income. They're going to be a developing country member in 2026 onward. There are many challenges. And these are the challenges on while being there. You know, If you are reaching a summit, then staying there means a lot of hard work's needed. And I, I had to mention here that there is an Asian conference study, you know, which you can share to the, uh, you know, others. They, they looked at this relatively minutely, Bangladesh to continue for next 25 years from 2026 20, onward, given their growth, economic growth, what kind of challenges they have to face and how to navigate those while they are as in a developing country. So those are addressed by the new study report, which is done by Salim Raihan and many others. Uh, so I, I just made it a reference. The point here, see, the, how it has happened, uh, as Professor Mustafa Zur said, it's a basket case, you know. Why? Because it has a demographic dividend, very uh, sophisticated uh, social sector you know, progress, ready-made garment export, uh, and of course, uh, resilient in, you know, remittance inflows, uh, and macroeconomic conditions are stable. That's what I've seen uh, literature which are being available by IMF and many of our friends who are working on macroeconomic parts at work. But I'm not going to discuss uh, you know, macroeconomic challenges here. This is not the right place or neither we have that kind of an ambit here. Now, uh, Bangladesh offers many economic avenues. I want the avenues for Eastern Northeastern India. Uh, and uh, what are those? These I uh, add uh, this way. How? I think as a trade economist, uh, you know, in Bangladesh, uh, when the last uh, prime minister visit to one of the success stories that India, as uh, Bangladesh and Japan, you know, they could make it in recent years, is that uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's visit to Tokyo, and and we have seen many important outcomes, of which a study uh, of SEPA, India, Bangladesh. Uh, Japan SEPA agreement uh, has been, you know, uh, the joint study group initiated. Uh, and uh, India, Japan, uh, SEPA was already implemented. They are at the moment discussing each other uh, to, you know, revise the agreement. After 10 years, either of the parties can call for a revision. That's what India, Japan 
uh, SEPA, you know, the, the partners are doing. I have no hesitation to add here that India is very happy with the SEPA that I have with Japan because India has a deficit in current account, but with Japan, India has a gain surplus in the capital account. That's what, you know, visionaries like Raymond Sobon and others, you know, Professor uh, and many others, you know, they are telling that only way the bilateral FTAs can sustain if there is a give and take or if there's a win-win. So here India, Japan is such case, but even there are issues in the trade front, which are primarily non-tariff barriers. And uh, India and Bangladesh, they have completed a SEP, you know, SEPA joint study group. Professor Salim, who is also attending here, he was one of the uh, members of Joint Study Group. So what I've seen that the three countries, once this negotiation is completed and they implement, and most likely 2025 could be in a year, I, I guess, uh, because 2026 Bangladesh comes to become a developing country. So they would like this SEPAs, both the Japan and India to be done before that. So. Hopefully we have two more years to go and negotiation to completed. This would help in many ways and offers many implications for them, including the different parts of India and also Bangladesh and in the neighborhood. Now, 421 billion 2023, the GDP, they expect to be 1 trillion by 2030, the nominal price, PPP terms is a bigger, they're already in you know, 1 trillion in PPP terms, uh, one and a half trillion in PPP terms today, Bangladesh. India at the same moment is aiming for 10 trillion by 2030. And notice at the moment, two to three percent they contribute. So when it comes to Indian GDP, notice contribution is not that big. One reason, uh, I mean, I should not say the word reason, one, one you know, uh, one, uh, and, and several analysis indicate that one uh, main cause for uh, you know two to three percent is the Bangladesh you know coming out East Pakistan and India the division that time so they became a northeastern part became from land linked to landlock and because of the transportation time and cost etc northeastern economy you know uh, they fall behind to others so today but now if we think that Bangladesh has rise which is very closer to the northeast right this is an organically grown, uh, very, very, you know, uh, near economies. So I'm sure that Bangladesh, when it moves to 1 trillion by 2030, it means a lot to the eight Northeastern states, seven sister, one brother, plus if you add West Bengal, Bihar, and Orissa. So it means a lot because the distance, and if those who are doing this gravity modeling, you know, we look at a distance, it talks a lot. So distance between, you know, these capitals, uh, states, you know, that, that's a so lower distance compared to the, you know, when, you know, far away places. So in short, it means that that rise of Bangladesh has a lot to offer to the Northeast as, and there is a causality, the Northeast all rises, will itself will offer many things to Bangladesh. That's what Professor Mustafa has said, but this is not so easy task. There are many other things there are many risks, et cetera, et cetera, and I will come. But what is important uh, for Northeast to follow that is it Bangladesh, uh, what is it they're doing? You know, these kind of things, uh, until you move, until you travel there, you know, it's difficult to uh, understand what is happening there, you know. And I have listed those because I've seen it by my own, you know. Uh, and, and there are many other areas, which is the, you know, physical infrastructure or digital, uh, there are in soft side, which Professor Mustafa Zur and Madam uh, Chair also spoken about it. Uh, on the software side, Bangladesh and, and India, or Bangladesh and Japan, for example, you know, they have been discussing each other, and there are very honest attempts by both of them. And rather, I said trilateral relations is coming out very fast in terms of you know the customs officers, Japanese. Uh, customs agencies are offering Bangladesh customs to go to Tokyo and Osaka and many other places to learn how you know the Japan manages the port infrastructure and uh, and the trade facilitation. Similarly, India has been India Civic has been you know extending tech, you know training and capacity building to Bangladesh as well. So what I see, 
that India and Bangladesh, their engagements are, uh, you know, uh, which is very comprehensive, even if there is any other word beyond comprehensive, uh, it, that should be you know, double comprehensive, if I may say in that way. So Bangladesh is adding many of this, and these are having a very strong implication to Northeastern states as well. And I will come a little closer of that in a plotting those in, a, in terms of in the maps, uh, like the Matarbari deep, deep Sea Project, and the Chotogram, Cox's Bazaar uh, Corridor, or even Dhaka Chotogram Corridors, several projects. Those. And if you look at them, it has a very strong development in implications for Tripura State, Mizoram, Assam, Eastern part of India, et cetera, et cetera, because these are the developments none of these states are having. Similarly, you know, Tripura, what they are adding up, this is having very strong implications for the Eastern Bangladesh, you know, districts like Kumilla, Brahman Beria, Chotogram, you know, uh, Cox's Bazaar, like that. Or what happening in Bengal was Bengal is having in, in you know, Western part of Bangladesh as well, like that. Now, I skip this discussion in the Matarbari, but let's come to um, uh, on the Tripura, because somehow the corridor or the gateway, uh, when it is a landlocked, the economy are closed, the gateway is basically, we look at from Siliguri and all the to Guwahati and et cetera, et cetera. But now this is going to be changed. And that change is going to be sort, sort of and permanent because of, opening up of you know, uh, access to the ports through Chotogram and ACMP, uh, one of the reasons, and then allowing you know, some other uh, um, um, maritime infrastructure in Bangladesh for the Northeastern states. There are issues which slowly, slowly, you know, I think will be sorted out. Uh, so for that, Tripura's connectivity linkages in Bangladesh is very crucial for the Northeast because the gateway uh, is going to be the subroom, Agartala, and then Silchar, Silong, Imphal, if you come to Aizal side, or then Gohati, and, and this way it will spread, move. So um, one is that uh, on the IWT front, uh, ma'am and Professor Mustafa rightly said, but there is a beauty in IWT. You know, PIWT almost has given birth of many new things, you know, the uh, cruise terminals, cruise facilities, uh, new protocols, uh, Cargo movement volume increased in the 10 years time from 1.43 million ton to 4 million ton. And many things happen in the IWT front, particularly in the last you know, uh, 10, 12 years. Uh, and, but there are three things I need to add. One is the still places where we don't have terminal and, and cargo handling facilities, dredging requirement, restriction of third country trade. These three things are actually prohibiting what? the intra-trade between Northeastern region and the Bangladesh. So more we allow, you know, uh, facilities like uh, cargo handling in Asuganj, for example, or uh, in, in, in the Burmaputra or somewhere in, 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 you know, in the region, that would help actually foster handling of goods. By the way, in this PIWTT also given a birth to this Bang, uh, you know, India-Bangladesh Coastal Civic Agreement and an offsuit of coastal shipping agreement is basically that ACMP. Uh, but ACMP is if, you know, the goods between uh, eastern part of India to northeastern part of India to Bangladesh. Uh, it doesn't talk about northeastern regions uh, trade with a third country using the Chotogram or any upcoming port. Perhaps this is needed. Why? because we are expecting uh, Bangladesh FDI more and more in, in Northeastern region, and as well as the Japan FDI coming will be in the Northeastern part of India. And that exportable or importable from Northeastern part, if they would like to have for any kind of an in FDI, uh, you know, it is logical to route it through you know, Matarbari or Chotogram or other ports, Mongla or somewhere else. So that is, Presently, it is not there, and hopefully, this will be discussed and will be added to that. We look forward to it. But Bangladesh gesture uh, to India and Northeastern parties, uh, you know, we, we, we heavily, you know, uh, respect it, but particularly personally me, because the transit, the word, which was a kind of thing, we have seen it 20 years back, 
and we have changed you know completely and here it is bangladesh which has, which has offered you know the transshipment uh, for the northeastern region out of his own you know uh, the gesture to the northeast and i looked at the literature and there is so much relationships between tripura and bangladesh from the freedom fight and struggle 1971 onward so this is a kind of an i will say in a loose word but don't you know say don't talk about much it's a kind of return gift that bangladesh has offered to uh, northeastern part of india but i think acmp is good fine but maybe you know third country trade if it is allowed for northeastern goods so they it will be in heavy you know return for matarbari development as well as for trade with you know northeastern uh, and 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 yeah and bangladesh as well let me come and uh, conclude uh, that uh, what the nearest the gateway port facility that is sabroom is doing you know sabroom to agartala distance as you know the sabroom the chotogram was once upon the same geography before 1947 the sabroom uh, uh, is what is it's adding up uh, like bangladesh it is coming up with asia's largest railway yard normally nowadays we don't see asia's largest facility in india you know it used to be one separate time asia's largest dental college rofi ahmed dental college in kolkata asia's largest you know um, uh, asia's first nobel laureate rabindranath tagore like that so nowadays we don't see that kind of things but this is happening in the subroom because the indian railway uh, is uh, adding is you know, bringing up is asia's largest railway yard and there must be something in their mind so land ports container yard scz the digital bandwidth uh, highway international buddhist university all of them hospitals just uh, last week we had discussion at and delhi uh, their interest of hospitals um, and then uh, health centers all in the subroom because one is availability of land and is an is is locational advantage looking at chotogram and cox's bazaar so and once the sepa between india bangladesh or bangladesh japan is ready i think tripura and northeastern part of india looking at this strategic you know is advantage they're going to get fdi and i'm sure this is going to be it's is merely personal view this there will be lot you know fdi coming from bangladesh as well as third country like a japan and asia and as well okay uh, here i also need to add before i go and speak on the challenges there are some issues uh, which is like you know which, which is i think to unlock the huge vast potential and to encourage the industrial value chains that uh, we have been talking about uh, access of ports that is bangladesh has given uh bangladesh uh india has offered bangladesh as a kind of a return gesture to join trilateral highway uh, bangladesh 26 onward one of the criteria uh, they have to fulfill uh, is that to go for alternate bilateral you know market access uh, alternate routes through uh, ftas and those are asian countries obvious reasons and getting hooked into the trilateral highway which is getting ready in the yesterday's a uh, conversation in delhi it indicates that uh, that this is this is physical layout of been done what it's missing is the you know uh, the um, the uh, the bridges the 69 small small bridges all across the trilateral highway particularly india myanmar side those needs to be uh, constructed or revamp the nhai led uh, reconstruction of 62 km in the hill in the myanmar it's almost done uh, except a few things but what is not done the you know, 69 bridges for which i think uh, government of india is very keen to complete it and that's what the bimstek business conclave which is going on in calcutta at the moment this is being discussed and also the ministry of uh, external affairs representative he also made and others as well so bangladesh joining in the trilateral highway it's also helpful bangladesh getting into northeastern region as well as to the asean country but what is missing here is if we'd like fdi from bangladesh or fdi um, you know north is going to the bangladesh there are restrictions from the trade point of view which is ambassador riva and professor mustafa zur others they know it 
that we, we, ha we haven't touched. There are port restrictions, there are et cetera, et cetera. There are, there are anti-dumping duties and many things. So those need to be removed. After all, if we want both India and Bangladesh to look at is a kind of mutual development partner for Northeast or Japan, Bangladesh going for, going for the Northeast, then small, small, tiny, tiny, you know, issues like, you know, port restrictions or other trade restrictions need to be cartel edge. Then uh, FDI is another front. If there is, a, you know, uh, if we need to have an FDI, then uh, restrictions on FDI is not an automatic route. Maybe from the least, uh, Bangladesh, maybe we, we, we remove, let other countries be there. And, um, and, um, uh, and there, are, there is one uh, also in a kind of a way, way for recommendations is each Northeastern state, they have a multiple industrial services clusters. Uh, for example, uh, Sikkim, it has a pharmaceutical cluster. Many of the top-notch Indian pharmaceutical companies supplying pharmaceutical to the Americans, and they have the US drug authorities approvals. So they have the factories in Rongpu. I request Professor Mustafa Izur and others who haven't visited, please visit Rongpu, which is the border uh, between West Bengal and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Sikkim. Uh, there, there are permissions required, by the way, so not a, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, free. But you see that there are almost 30 pharmaceutical clusters. So I can see the value chain linkages from pharmaceutical sector in Bangladesh. Bangladesh health sector is also very much you know, advanced to what it used to be. And they would also, Bangladesh pharmaceutical companies like Beximco, you know, they have a global presence. So, so here I see kind of value chain linkage. Similarly, if you come to Assam, uh, you know, Assam next to Bangalore, Kolkata, whole, you know, um, um, and uh, Chennai, uh, also Guwahati is coming as a health cluster. So I think Guwahati, Imphal, those places I see the educational services links, you know, in a very casual way, you know, I am mentioning it, but those corridors can only improve if we, you know, if we bring here the connectivity. Presently, no flights. We expected that uh, Agartala, Chottogram flights will be, you know, will, will be started. Hopefully it will be shown by Air India, ATR. Similarly, from from Jotogram or Dhaka to you know several places in Bangladesh uh, and uh, northeast uh, that should be you know uh, that should be resumed. Uh, those are you know, small small steps can help bring huge benefits to you know to to the northeast as as well as Bangladesh. Now uh, some uh, you know uh, some the uh, you know uh, challenges I have already discussed, uh, but in terms of Bangladesh. Post 2026, trade diversification would be a big challenge. So, is there any way Bangladesh is certainly moving from labor intensive to poor capital intensive? Is any way uh, Northeast is you know uh, the place where we have a skilled resources? Can Northeast be also hooked into those you know change of uh, you know trade diversification to sustain? Similarly, on the climate point of view, we know there's a rise in you know uh, water level. 2050, 2047 onward because of the, you know, climate issues, uh, there would be a big, you know, threat uh, to the sustainability of the livelihood, both the Northeast and Bangladesh. So can we do, you know, or think for some kind of a joint research, joint dialogue, you know, those are, you know, there's a challenge we can uh, offer uh, you know, a way forward like that. Well, navigational issue uh, and navigational means that Cornofoli, as we know, that Cornofoli River is an origin is not in the sea. This is the fall is in the sea. The river is falling into the sea. It's an estuarian. Uh, it is it is an origin. is in is in a water biosphere. Where is it? It is in Mizoram, and that biosphere somehow over time is getting you know dried. So that's why we see the huge, you know, the siltation in the Cornofoli, and quite naturally. The port. That's why that they need to shift it from Chattogram to, uh, and very well they thought about the mother variant, etc. So if this navigational issues, you know, become very complicated, then the port itself will be hampered. You know, that's what I'm going to. Tell. So, so it's, it's proper strategies. India is coming up with a big international transshipment terminal at, a, you know, at Andaman Nicobar areas. You know, 
it might be coming up or it may not be because of the environmental issues. But if that goes up, the place called Galatia Bay, if that goes into a place, then uh, the port geography of these Bay of Bengal, including Kolkata, Haldia, and many, and in, this is going to be changed. So we need to ask, understand this will actually pull down Bangladesh, you know, graduation to meaningful graduation to the developing world. Uh, here, you know, I have written it in 1991-2001, this 11 years, India's liberal, post-liberalization, India could not do much in terms of international trade because India never had, you know, that kind of a port facility. Uh, but things have changed thereafter. So, and then there are six security issues. Uh, security issues, I mean, uh, BDR, BSF. Uh, there are lots of issues between them, you know. Uh, there are uh, both, you know, hard security and, and, and non-traditional securities, both. So I think those need to be, as well, you know, we need to discuss. An economist charter cannot ignore a security. That's what I was told and convinced by the people in Delhi, you know. Uh, <laughs> so I, I have to say that these are very important. Global crisis issues, we, we know, and I, I skip it because of the lack of time. There are uh, other areas, you know, if we have a big plan, like the one Professor Mustafa is an ambassador, Riva Ganguly Dash, many others have been talking about, Salim Raihan, Mizan, uh, Mizan Ur Rahman, and many others, you know, I, I, I can go keep on adding them. All, you know, cannot work until political relation is there on small, small thing, you know, which is between, you know, the between the races. So those are very important as well. So I, I stop and uh, if I may, you know, just those who are the students here attending, kind of a takeaways, you know, the professors that come at the end, they say after the lecture, here are the takeaways, please note down. So what I say that the relation between Bangladesh and Northeastern regions, great opportunities both way, agree with Professor Mustafa Zur, Ambassador Riva and others. And this relation is the way that we have evolved, this is an irreversible and great thanks to our diplomatic forces who have been constantly working. Um, first, uh, High Commissioner, Ambassador High Commissioner Subimal Dotto, uh, and, and we have with us Ambassador Riva Ganguly Das, and I, I mean, you know, lots of things out of it, which I cannot, you know, open, discuss in this open forum, but uh, diplomacy has played a very strong role in both ways. Uh, and, uh, and there are, you know, good uh, development on the connectivity front, but digital, physical link, link to those who are, which are the, you know, complete on projects, which is not yet completed. There are many, you know, um, pluses which yet to be completed, like, you know, the trade facilitation for, I know that Bangladesh is coming up a single window. India has already in, installed a single window up and running for a couple of years. Uh, they, they should speak each other. That's what Professor Mustafa just said, interoperability. Second is, India has successfully introduced UPI, right? We go to the, um, we use it, the QR code pay, based on the payment of the PQ. So also Bangladesh. Uh, but interoperability between them doesn't work. If we can make a payment, uh, sits in Bangladesh using, uh, you know, the online mode, but payment through the gateways, still not seamless. So that's what India Singapore has done. India Singapore model has a lots of off, you know things to India Bangladesh and BBI and countries as well. Uh, some things which we have been telling, at, uh, which we have been talking about, and uh, many others um, at RIS, at uh, at uh, at uh, at ASEAN conference, Chambesha Chidatta, and many others they are talking about that. Let's do it in Northeast Bangladesh CEO forum. That's not there. Prime Minister Hasina requested. Uh, I, I remember, you know, to um, uh, our former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh and uh, current Prime Minister Modi that she would like to have a summit with the Chief Ministers of, of the, you know, seven Northeastern states and West Bengal. Is it going to happen, uh, or is it so you leave it there because it's a politically sensitive? So those, you know, small small thing will have a very long impact, like you know, exchange of political leaders, uh, business leaders. Those are important. Uh, we we don't see much happening in the exchange fronts, by the way. Uh, many are, they would like to come here. Uh, Beamstake Business Summit is going on in Kolkata. 
I'm not attending it, you know. Uh, I was invited, but because of family reasons, I'm in Calcutta at the moment. I have to be in Calcutta today for the family reason. I could not go, but I've seen a photograph. Uh, there are 25 business delegation high level they are visiting here. But how many high level business delegations going to uh, Dhaka or Bangladesh? That's need to be, you know, talked about. So I don't see those are coming very much, you know, or there should be more and more. Uh, think tank network, university connection, not happening, by, by the way. Uh, dialogue between Tripura uh, universities, uh, Northeastern universities and uh, Bangladesh, there is no such forum. That should be, that should be, I think Indian Ministry of External Affairs, uh, Indian High Commission should you know, give some support to it, and small support. Professors, uh, they don't need honorarium. They only need airfare to be taken care of they were very happy to give the best services. Mm -hmm. And Bangladesh is going to take over the Beamstick chair uh, and the lead country. Uh, and I think uh, we, we are going to have, uh, we're going to look at forward Bangladesh uh, for leading the Beamstick. That would also have a very strong implications, development implications for Northeast as well. So I stop here, to go for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Day. Uh, I think you've raised, uh a lot of important issues. Uh, SIPA certainly will uh, have a lot of impact. You've talked about uh, trilateral partnerships. You've spoken about uh, value chain linkages, I think, which is very important. And especially COVID has taught us how important it is to have resilient supply chains. Uh, the pharmaceutical sector is extremely important for cooperation because both the uh, Northeast and India have uh, and Bangladesh have uh, huge uh, complementarities there. And uh, the many uh, and stakeholder uh, dialogue, I think that's very, very key to whatever government does for its implementation. Because I always say that governments don't, government creates the enabling environment. At the end of the day, it's the businesses and uh, you know private sector which has to actually implement and take it forward and more and more dialogue amongst and with them is very important. So we don't have much time left now. I think we have about uh, 20, 25 minutes for question answers. Uh, are there any questions? I don't see anything in the chat box. So will you please raise your hand if you have any question, then we can uh, and please mention whom the question is or, or ma'am, because there, there are many uh, viewers in the social media, if they have posed any questions there as well. Yeah, if, if, if uh, Impri can share if those. If Impri can please uh, help us with that. If there are questions there. Jian. Ma'am, I'll just look for questions on the YouTube, but I just had two questions myself. And um, one is addressed to Mr. Rahman. Uh, sir, even though Bangladesh has received a lot of international funds for developing its country, the resilience of its own people stand out. Do you think that uh, the handing over of Padda River Bridge photo to David Malpass was a watershed moment for Bangladesh and its government? Okay. I, yeah. Um, no, thank you. Uh, the the Padma River Bridge was, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, envisioned in 2010. And as you know, we initially, uh, uh, the World Bank was to support it, but then there were some questions raised with regards to the uh, you know, integrity of the project. Uh, and, and so Bangladesh decided to to go and build uh, on its own. So, uh, so this is, uh, I think, uh, very important uh, in the sense that uh, uh, it has allowed us to also manage uh, a big infrastructure project. And the footprint of that experience uh, we will benefit in years to come. But having said that, I also should mention that the projected uh, financing went from 10,000 crore taka to 34,000 crore taka. So uh, because of the delay and et cetera. And, and, and you know, the issues of uh, good governance uh, 
completing the projects on time that I have also discussed and, and probably also mentioned. And those remain a major, major issue. Obviously, Padna Bridge and its management has given us uh, an experience. But at the end of the day, whether it is uh, foreign financed or locally financed, it is the taxpayers who will have to pay it. <laughs> and, and, and the debt servicing uh, uh, lies with, with the taxpayers. But the problem arises when you have you know, uh, cost overrun then the tolls uh, have to be kept uh, up and, 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 and it's for the consumers and, and, and the producers, uh, their benefits and, and their cost effective uh, uh, you know, pr production is undermined. So that, that remains a major, major concern in, in Bangladesh. I also should mention that I, I don't know if you know that, uh, that uh, $200 million out of the three and a half billion dollar uh, project cost that is ended up with. India has given a grant from the first LOC of $1,000 million, $1 billion. So $200 million has been given to, uh, by India to Bangladesh as a grant. So the first LOC uh, is actually $800 million. And because the projects were uh, expi extended, another $65 million uh, has been added. So, so India has also contributed uh, to this. One of the reasons why we, you know, so much money we have spent and, and the cost uh, return, uh, the, the economic return and financial return was that for the these and the rail link, which is being built, which is more costly, than, than, than the Padma Bridge itself, and it's financed two third by, uh, by, by, by China and, and, and one third by, by Bangladesh. So, so together, it's about an $8 billion project, the, the bridge and, and the rail link. And, and the justification was also, and this is connected with today's discussion, is that the Padma uh, you know, Bridge will, be an economic corridor through sub-regional cooperation. You see, by deepening sub-regional cooperation with the neighboring states of India, we generate the, the, the cargo, which then uh, can make the, the, this investment viable. So from that perspective also, you know, deepening uh, you know, sub-regional cooperation with, with, with India and servicing the, the the, uh, the transport cargo from West India to East India and taking it to Mangla port and, and then to uh, uh, Northeast states. All these are, are becoming very important for the viability of these, you know, this rail and road $8 billion investment that, that we are going for. So from that perspective also, so what we have discussed today becomes so important because the sunk cost is there. And if we don't, if we, we have done A, but don't do B and C, then obviously the whole justification of A is not there, you know? So from that perspective, I think your question is very important. Thank you for raising it. Um, and the thank other you. question. Yeah, sorry, thank you, Professor uh, Rahman. Yeah, and too. the other question, ma'am, is uh, addressed to both you and Dr. Prabhinde, uh, that while there is a lot of talks at the level of diplomats and at the level of economists about, you know, building road bridges and transportation and trade connectivity between the two countries, uh, in today's India, there is an internal dogma related to the people of Bangladesh in that sense that there is a politics of hate that is being spread. So uh, I, in consideration of illegal immigrants, et cetera. So do you think that lack of trust deficit between, the, between population to population is a cause of concern or is, is, is that not a deterrent in the relations? Uh, well, if I may have the first word on it and then I'll ask Ruby to speak. Uh, you know, Professor Mustafizur Rahman also spoke about uh, issue of uh, narrative and, you know, perception. 
we you can't ignore the fact there is a perception issue perception problem here but the fact also remains that uh, you know it's not something which is one solid thing which you know you can say that this is the perception of bangladesh and this is the perception of india in my experience the perception varies a lot from people's experience and i have seen that the perception of young people of bangladesh is very different from people of the older generation this is a generation which has not seen they've been born in a you know relatively prosperous uh bangladesh they've not seen the liberation war uh they see economic opportunities with india and uh, in the case of india bangladesh relations being such close neighbors and being the having the history that we have seen there are always you know elements which will try to give a twist to something which where there is no twist to be seen hmm. so perception and narrative building are two very important aspects and now that we live in a world of social media this gets amplified so one odd uh, you know uh, voice which may not be the mainstream <coughs> voice multiplies and then it appears that this is the mainstream voice so you know here uh, the 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 uh, what we can do to counter this is to have more and more people to people connect i mean look at what connects us the biggest connection i feel as a bengali is the language connect which we really don't use as much as we can uh, the connection of theater the connection of shared history uh, we sing the same songs we read the same poetry we read the same books a large part of india and bangladesh but that particular part of the story uh, somehow you know it's not uh, it doesn't happen as much as it should happen so i think uh, perception i wouldn't use the word perception management in that sense or narrative management because that gives the impression that you know you are sitting and scheming and preparing something i think you should just let people Uh, freely mix with each other and see for themselves the economic benefits of this relationship which has really grown which and which you know i think uh, as indians and bangladeshis we can really be proud of we can give it as an example into the world of good neighborly relationship i mean the, all over the world countries talk about you know rule of law and you know un clause and this and that india and bangladesh don't just talk about it it's not lip service we've actually implemented it hmm? the arbitration award was accepted as it is land boundary agreement how many countries have been able to show the political will to do that so there is uh, i think there is lot more dialogue lot more talking to each other which is needed and not more people to people contact and movement between the two countries and it's happening i'm glad to say that it's happening over to you prabir whatever you want no i i i have nothing to add ma'am i'm absolutely fine you know i have nothing to add so um yeah absolutely fine i have nothing, nothing to add so, Professor Rahman, even the question yeah. was to me and <laughs> yeah, no, no, I uh, I think that uh, Jan has mentioned about a very important issue with regard to trust deficit, uh, and uh, and uh, obviously when when in Bangladesh we see that uh, you know some of the uh, you know some of the groups uh, they try to incite. Uh, hate against you know uh, immigrants and and declare them that they should be pushed back to bangladesh and uh, registration etc etc these uh, do really you know uh, uh, leave their footprints uh, in the minds of uh, of the people and then the progress that is being made in other areas that becomes you know uh, that becomes hostage to that that mm. so so uh, i think you are very right the word is not perception management i think the word is uh, trust building uh, and 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 how do you do that uh, i think uh, you know uh, geography uh, matters our neighbor neighborly relations matter um, and what uh, happens in one country obviously has its uh, repercussions in other countries uh, thankfully in bangladesh we we do uh, have a culture of uh, you know not being very much affected by what is happening uh, 
uh, which may uh, may undermine the trust deficit and i am mentioning with regard to the registration and etc cetera, etc cetera, uh, initiatives uh, being taken uh, but uh, but on the other hand i think that uh, we should be uh, very sensitive to to what we do and it has repercussions uh, uh, on 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 both sides uh, of the border, so I will leave it at that. Uh, and uh, but I think that I have uh, been able to, you know, transmit uh, the sentiment because what I see that many years of very painstaking, you know, uh, work that we have done, sometimes it's just in in you know in one uh, moment. Uh, is undermined. Uh, so, so we have to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, very careful uh, with regard to that. Kabir mentioned one one issue, I think, uh, which uh, which is very important. For example, he mentioned about, for example, in in the trade uh, anti-dumping duty. So, so this is also another issue which is now going on. You know, uh, anti-dumping duty on jute exports, you know, ranging from fifty-three dollar uh, to one hundred fifty-three dollar per ton. Uh, so I think that uh, these are also issues which need uh, to be uh, needs to be you know addressed. I remember that when the the anti-dumping duty, probably you remember on the Rohima Fruits dry cell battery. It was there for five years, and then uh, uh, you know when Bangladesh uh, went to the W two dispute settlement body, and it was withdrawn. By but by that time the the, the market was gone. So so I think that uh, that uh, there are also issues which we need to be, you know. Uh, there may be concern, but uh, I think there are there should be avenues where we can resolve it before taking action. Uh, so that would be uh, my supplement to 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 what you mentioned about trust deficit. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Prabhupada there. Uh, we will just get along with the session uh, with a vote of thanks. So, thank you to all the panelists. Uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah. uh, Mr. Das has uh, logged out. I'll just check with her. Meanwhile, Professor Day, do you have anything to add? No, okay. I, I uh, only, you know, uh, uh, kind of suggestion to you and the IMPRI team. Um, uh, maybe the outcome of this today's conversation, if you can you know, share um, through a policy brief or a co commentary, you know, for wider circulation. That's what just I, I think, uh, you know, uh, many of our, um, this, this conversation you know, should be documented and should be shared with the larger audience. So if you can help us, so that will be my only you know, kind of request uh, to you and uh, others in there, yeah. Sure, sure, we will certainly do that. We'll come out with the event report for all our events. Uh, I endorse the idea, yes, <laughs> endorse the idea, sorry. <laughs> so we had planned for our, our closing remarks by Ambassador Das, but since he's not here, shall we proceed with the vote of thanks or if, if you have anything to add? Mm, can you? No, thank you. Nothing from my side. Yeah. I'll just say, ma'am was here, she just knocked out. Okay, in that case, Jian, why not you go forward? Sure. Okay. Thank you to all the panelists. To say this discussion was enlightening would be an understatement. We learned a lot today about how Bangladesh has become an international case for development and also how India and Bangladesh are connected to each other through various trade and transport agreements. I hope 
we have learned a lot more on what the two countries can do to further reap benefits from each other's proximity. And as we come to the end of this enriching discussion, I, Jian, would like to propose the formal vote of thanks on behalf of IMPRI Center for International Relations and Strategic Studies, PIRSS. We are grateful to our chair, Ambassador Riva Ganguly Dash, and our esteemed panelists, Professor Mustafizur Rahman and Dr. Prabir De, for taking part in this discussion and enlightening us. I would also like to thank all of you attending today, either on Zoom or through YouTube. We thank all of our participants who have raised some questions and actively participated in today's web policy talk session. We are also grateful to you if you are watching us later on our YouTube channel or listening to us via podcast or reading our publications. You may also find such similar discussions and thematic events under IMPRI web policy talk series, the state of international affairs, hashtag diplomacy dialogue over our YouTube channel playlist. We hope you continue to join us in the near future for our IMPRI web policy talks and web policy learning. Wishing you a good evening. Thank you. Dhanabad. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mustafa Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep in touch. Thank yes, you. Yes. Thank you very much.